standing in the riparian zone here, five and a half acre plot that used to be pasture, used to have cows grazing in here, and we entered into a contract with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to replant it in trees for the salmon that live in the creek right over here. And you can see where eight years into the program we've got some fairly good trees. Actually this tree is only about six years old. And we also lose a lot of trees to beavers. So we're constantly replanting in here to try to get it into a forested state. And this is one of the more difficult sections where we've had a lot of trouble getting trees established. Very typical when you put trees into pasture. Here we are in one of our more successful parts of the stands where we had very little loss of the trees. So these are eight-year-old alders and their tops, their crowns are touching. We call that canopy closure. And what happens is not only do you get leaf litter on the ground starting to suppress the grass, the shade is also much more extreme in here than out in the pasture there. So it's starting to look more and more like a forest. And as you look over the alder section here, very nice alder grove, you'll see the shore pine, lodgepole pines, the earliest ones we planted, about seven, eight-year-old trees right here. And they're also starting to close their canopies. And it'll be a very nice conifer forest here in a few years. Here along the boundary line, a long, straight, 700-foot stretch, we've put in a living fence, fence, a hedgerow, Old English style, using the hawthorn tree as a primary component that gets very high. And underneath it is a native rose. And it will create an impenetrable thicket to wildlife if you prune it properly. And as the fence disappears, this will live on for hundreds of years. So it will provide food, berries, and nuts for wildlife. And it creates a nice edge effect. Pasture on one side, a nice thick hedgerow for animals to hide. Wow. 800 years long. I don't know quite what they do with that. I do see some debris. Now, how did the, how did the blackberry experiment work here? We'll find out. All right, this is part of what we're trying to solve here. When you don't have trees along the creek and you have cows grazing down in there, the banks will start to erode. And it's pretty severe, pretty severe right here. This section's been a particularly hard one to get back into forest because the beavers keep eating the trees that we put here. So it'll take a while. But this is just one less than 10% of this creek that we're restoring that's in bad shape as this. Oh. Well, there's different levels of managing the forest, and this one is an example of afforestation, creating new forest where there hasn't been one for a very long time, in this case about 100 years, when they first cleared it for pasture. So we're actually gaining forest land here. And up in the hills, that forest has always been there, but we're creating bigger forests through active forest management. So these are two ways that you can increase the carbon on your land. The other one is reforestation, where any area that you've recently cleared, you definitely put it right back into forest.